Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Asri Krasnichi. I'm a certified Cisco CCNA and CCMP trainer. Now we're going to move to section 2.2, Getting Basics, part of the chapter 2, Configuring a Network Operating System of CCNA Semester 1, Introduction to Network. Why the switch? Cisco IOS switch is one of the simplest devices that can be configured on a network. This is because there is no configuration that are required prior to device functioning. At its most basic, a switch can be plugged in with a no configuration, but it will switch data between connected devices. So for this, we're going to create a two PC network connected via a switch, set a name for the switch, limited access to the device configuration, configure banner messages, and then in the end, save the configuration. So for this demonstration, I will use a Cisco packet tracer. So I'm going to open the packet tracer. So we're going to do demonstrate this on the Cisco packet tracer. So just move the packet tracer so we can all see it nicely. OK, so we're going to do the same network as what they have in the in the uh, PowerPoint there as well. So we're going to use the devices that we need. Here are routers, but we need the switches. So we're going to use 2960, two of them, so switch. And Cisco always thinks they start with zero, yeah? So you have switch zero and then switch one. And then we're going to need a two end devices. So we have a PCs, we can use laptops, servers, and so on. So let's just use two PCs. Okay, like this. And then we're going to connect. For connection, we have this like a lightning bolt. So select that, that says connection. And for this connection, we're going to need between the PC and the switch, we need a straight through copper straight through cable so click on the on the pc then fast ethernet then on the switch we select one of the ports say port 10 from piece a switch to a switch we're going to need a copper crossover cable so select that then select one of the ports on the switch for for the moment or this exercise it doesn't really matter which port you're using say 15 okay and say another port here and this side is 15 as well and then from switch 1 to PC1 again copper but this time a straight through cable so 10 to PC1 see the packet tracer we can see the crossover cable is dashes on the line on the straight through cable it's straight not dashes okay now first thing is the name why why we give it names so when configuring a network device, one of the first steps is to configure a unique device name or host name. The default name for switch, Cisco IOS switch is switch. Imagine if the network, inter-network had several switches that were all named with the default name switch. This could create a considerable confusion during network configuration and maintenance. So for example, imagine that you are configuring, you are here and you're configuring all these switches, but everything is named switch, switch, switch. You don't know which switch you are configuring when you're moving from this switch to this switch. So that's why we give it a name to identify. Okay, switch one, flow one, uh, flow one, switch one, uh, floor two, switch one, side room, whatever. Give it a good distinction uh, name that we can distinguish one from one switch from another. So these are the guidelines for naming convention that should be used. They, the names, they have to start with a letter. We can't have a space in the names and end with a letter or digit. Use only letters, digits, and dashes, and be less than 64 characters in length. So 63 characters is the maximum of the, for the name. So we open one of the switches. Here um, on the packet tracer, we just click on it, and it'll open the switch, right? On the real life, there's no way where you can click on the switch, right? So you have to connect the PC to the switch. So you use a, a console cable, this blue cable, and at the back of the PC is RS3. RS-232 port, one of these serial ports. And then on the other side is a RJ-45 port they will put in the console. Okay, we can't really see it. Uh, it's a console port. Right, so let me just move this a little bit. Um, okay. Let me just, let me just um, delete that first. I'm going to take a print screen. So you get to see it. Um, console board on the PC. 
RS232. Then on the switch, so let me just print screen this and put it in the paint. This port. What I'm talking about is you connect it here on this port, console port. Right? Okay. No, don't want to say that. So click switch, then console port. I don't know it's above your screen, you can't see it, but trust me, uh, that's what I'm connecting to. Now we click on the PC and on the PC we open let me just move this so we can nice to see it. Desktop, then terminal emulation. Keep this terminal configuration, port configuration. These are the default. You should always keep the default, but you should know these numbers. Bits per second is 9600. Data bits 8. Parity none. Stop bits 1. And flow control none. Click OK. Now we are inside the switch. Right. So you can see the name of the switch is a default, just switch. And do you remember what mode we are? We are in user mode, yeah? User exec mode. So for us to do any configuration, we have to move to privilege mode. So type enable. And you can see the mode has just changed. We are in privilege mode. And then con we can't do configuration here. So we have to move to the global configuration mode because the name is in global. So configure, terminal, enter. Now we are in the global configuration mode. From here, we can change the name. So let's just change the name. Host name. We give it a good name. Um, I don't know. That's, that's what we use. Very, very clever name. SW1 or SW0, for example, because it's switch zero. That's a name. So you have to remember, the name can be up to 63 characters long, like this. No space. You can't put space and then continue, like that. not allowed. Um, what else? It has to start with a letter, so you can't start with 0 SW1. Um, it has to finish with a letter or a, a, a number SW1, or SW0 in this case. Okay. Now, configuring the hostname from the privilege exec mode, we access the global configuration mode. We enter the command configure terminal. After the command has been executed, the prompt will change. You can see that config switch config. As shown in the figure, in the global configuration mode, enter the hostname. So, hostname, like here we say hostname SW flow one. So, switch, so switch one, flow one, and so on. After the command is execu executed, the prompt will change to SW dash flow dash one that's what we entered here right so whatever commands you put that's why the name is going to change to so for example let's change that to what we're saying in the screen host name or in the powerpoint sw1 flow one like that that's how the name now we are using excellent now demonstration you saw that how to change the name securing device access Physically limiting access to network devices by placing them in a closet and locked racks is a good practice. However, passwords are primary defense against unauthorized access to network devices. These are devices uh, access password. For example, first password we have enable password, limited access to the privilege exec mode, and enable secret, same as enable password, which means enable password is being deprecated. We have enable secret, and it will encrypt the password and it will limit access to the privilege exec mode. Then we have a console password which limit the device using uh, access using a console connection and then VTY passwords limit the device access you over telnet. When we do the Cisco uh, labs we have to remember that only two passwords we can be using Cisco and class but these are not the passwords you should be using on, on the real world you should be having complex passwords using the upper keys lower keys uh, sorry, upper letters, lower letters, numbers, um, different um, characters, and so on. Now, if we go to uh, to our switch, like that switch. Now, if I should go to exit, right? Exit again. Now, I'm all out from the switch. I'm logged out from the switch. Now, if I press enter, now I'm. I can see that I have. I'm logged into the switch. I'm in the user mode. Okay, I, can, I can't do a lot, but I can do some stuff here. And I'll type enable. I'm in the privilege mode. Now what you want to do, you want to really give some passwords. So people can't just do this. They can't just log on to your switch, a user mode, and they can't just type enable, and they get access to administrator mode, privilege mode. 
So first time, first thing you need to uh, make sure that when somebody types enable, they be challenged with a password. Yeah. So when somebody types enable, they get challenged with the password. So go to the global configuration mode, configure terminal. And then in here, we type enable, which means when somebody types enable, we give them a secret. They need to know the secret, which is class. Secret is like a password, yeah? So when somebody types enable, they should know this secret. And secret is class. Press enter. Type exit. We're going to try that. Exit again. Now, all logged out from the router or switch in this case. Press enter. The commands are exactly the same for the router as well, yeah? I'm um, still access to the user mode. Fine, we can control that as well. But when I type enable now, now it's asking for password. Before it didn't. And I'm going to type class. As you can see, the password it will not display as you're typing. You didn't see me typing. Okay, if I go back to user mode, disable. And when I type enable, it's asking for password. I'm, I'm typing the password, but you can't see anything. Okay, so class, I'm typing it correctly now. I'm in the privilege mode. We want to give the uh, like uh, restrict access to the, even this mode. To do that, we have to go to the console mode. So line, or first go to global configuration mode. So configure terminal. Okay. Um, there's a mistake here. So misspell it. Configure terminal. And then we have to go to the line, so line console zero. I told you in Cisco everything starts at zero, and the console port is the first port, that's console zero. So line console zero, which means we're accessing the port console. And we want to give them a password, Cisco. So if somebody logs into our router and they want access to this mode, they should know the password Cisco. And I press enter here. One more command I have to follow this, it says login. Which means that login, it says, okay, well, if somebody's trying to log in, they need to know that password. Okay, I'm gonna test it again. So exit, exit. Oh, I could have done end there. Tap exit again to log out from the router. Now, when I press enter, before it didn't ask me for password. Now let's see. Yes, I just asking for password. This password is Cisco. Now, there was a restriction even to get to the user mode. But there's another restriction if I want to get to the privilege mode. So enable. See, there's a password. I have to pass class. Okay. So I'm going to write to these modes uh, what we're doing in the notepad so you can keep track of what we're doing. Uh, let me just put this down here like that. Okay. I'm going to fonts, change the fonts to something small. Nine will be okay. Okay, we did enable. We did configure. Configure terminal. Okay, then we continue. Uh, okay, I mean, I like to make like like that because that, that sign or exclamation mark doesn't have any effect on the router, but it's, for me it's good because I can separate my commands. We did a name, we give a name, so, so uh, the router was, or the switch was like this, switch, like this, and then we type enable, right, so it was like this, after, like this, after we typed enable, we were here, and then we type configure terminal, right, and we were, it was, the prompt has changed to something like this. Like this. And we give it a host name. So I'm not going to write the prompt. I'm just going to write the actual the commands that we're doing. So the prompt should remember them. So enable, configure, terminal. Then we change the name. So host name. It was sw1 flow1. And then we change the password. So enable secret class. We said. And then we went to the console port, so line console zero, and we said password Cisco. 
One thing I have to tell you about passwords, if there's a lead in uh, a spaces like this, they're not part of the password, right? Until it sees a letter, uh, then that's going to start, the password is going to start, right? But the trading spaces, they will become part of your password, right? So your password is that. So you have to remember not to keep, if you don't want any spaces, not to have any spaces behind your password, right? So not like that, because that's, that's your password now. Like that, that's your password. So Cisco and a space. My students, most of the time when they have a, uh, they can't access the, the routers, they say, oh, I've done the password, I know the password was us. And that, that type, Cisco. But then I just go there and I say, Cisco, space, I'm in. Because I press space, I'm telling them to press the question mark, to have a look at the commands, and then they did that, but they forgot to go back. They need to go back. Right, the, the last command that we did is actually log in. Log in. Right, and the commands, you can see that I'm doing the, these commands that I indent to this command, because these commands are the child commands of this parent command. So I go to line console, and I'm doing these commands under there. Then another thing we're going to do is we're going to give uh, in the VTY, so line VTY, that means if somebody is trying to log on from remote, we give a password. Again, use Cisco and log in. Okay, so let's do that on the R switch, so configure. Or can just config T, yeah, so this is configure terminal. Config T, uh, line VTY 0 to 4, password Cisco. Make sure you don't use a space and question mark. Just password Cisco, enter, login. Okay. Now secure in privilege exec mode that we did. To secure the privilege exec mode, use enable secret command, or password command. An older, less secure variation of this command was enable password, password command. So although either of these commands can be used to establish uh, authentication before access to privilege exec enable mode is permitted, it is recommended to use enable secret command because it is going to have an encrypted version. So enable secret command provides the greatest security because the password is encrypted. If we have a look at that, uh, let's go to our uh, switch. I type end and I'll do show running config. Press enter. That's our enable secret. So the password is already encrypted. And that's our host name that we typed. So we did the command show running config, whatever we are have on the RAM at the moment. Press the spacebar to go all the way down. Press again, press again. Now you can see that here in the console port, the password is Cisco. It's not encrypted. And this VTY line is not encrypted either. The passwords. Secure in user exec mode in the console port. The console port of the network device must be secured at the bare minimum by requiring the user to supply a strong password. This reduces the chance of unauthorized personnel physically plugging a cable into the device and gaining device access. From a global configuration mode, the command line console zero is used to enter the line configuration mode for the console. The zero is used to represent the first and the most, in the most cases only console interface. The second command, password Cisco, specifies the uh, password for the console line. The login command configures the switch to require authentication upon login. So that's our commands. We are in the global configuration mode. Type line console zero, password Cisco, login. So login configures the switch to require authentication when you try to log in. VTY passwords. The VTY line allows access to Cisco devices via Telnet. By default, money uh, Cisco switches supports up to 16 VTY lines. These are numbered from 0 to 15. A password needs to be set for all available VTY lines. The same password can be set for all connections. However, it's often desired that a unique password can be set for one line to provide a fallback for administrative entry to devices that, uh, if the other connections are in use. So you say line VTY 0 to 4. So we're configuring five lines here. And all of them will have the same password Cisco. But you could go line VTY 0, password Cisco 0. Line VTY 1, password Cisco 1. Line VTY 2, password Cisco 2. So each line can have a different password. But in this case, even for our just start training, we are configuring all five lines with the same password. 
Now, um, passwords by default are not encrypted, apart from the secret. Secret is encrypted anyway. And this service is not on by default. It says no service password encryption. What this service is going to do, it's going to encrypt all our passwords. So by default, we saw the console password with the clear text, line VTY passwords with clear text. So if you want to encrypt these two passwords, not the secret, secret is encrypted already. If you want to encrypt these two passwords and any other future passwords that are decrypted by default, you run that service. So you go to global configuration mode and type service password encryption. You enable that service. If we do show and run in clear, we can see that in the service is enabled and the passwords are encrypted now. So it doesn't say Cisco anymore, it just says uh, Cisco encryption. We have an encrypted password. Okay, so we can try that again in our uh, switch. So again, like I said earlier, look, we have a Cisco unencrypted password. This secret here on the top is already encrypted. We don't have to worry about that. And the, in, the, pa the, the service that we want to enable is this service password encryption. By default, look, it says no. Okay, so we have to go to the global configuration mode, configure terminal, and then service, service, password, encryption. Okay, we did that. So we're going to go and check it. So end and show running config. That was already encrypted, so we don't have to worry about that. Again, we didn't care. But this one is, see? doesn't say no anymore. That service is on. So if I go all the way at the end, you can see that my passwords now, it doesn't say Cisco. It's been encrypted. Okay, it's a weak encryption. It's very weak encryption, but it is encrypted. So somebody doesn't see them if you're just running the show running command on the screen. Banner, banner, is, banner messages are very important. Import is important part of the legal process in the event that someone is prosecuted for breaking into a device. Wording that implies what the login is welcome or invited is not appropriate. So banner, what do we use the banners? Banners are used if, if you have a hacker is trying to hack to your router or switch. And then if they don't see a banner, they say, well, in the core, they will say, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that I'm not allowed to come to your router. So for that reason, we create a banner. So we warn people, we say, okay, only authorized users should be allowed. And do not use any welcoming words or invite invitation words. Because then, if you say welcome on your banner, then the hacker will say, well, they told me welcome. How can you say you're not allowed if you, if you say welcome? Often used for legal notification because it is displayed to all connected terminals. Some example of, of information to include in the banner, it will be use of the devices specifically for authorized personnel, activity may be monitored, and so on. So, for example, when we logged on here, we didn't have a banner. We created a banner that says authorized users only. Oh, I should say only there, and then exit, and then we, sh we saw the banner, so authorized users only. Okay, we're going to test that on our switch. So if I go to the switch, I exit, I don't see, I don't see any banner. Banner will appear here in the beginning, right? So right away it's going to say, okay, well, authorized users only. So if I say, uh, this was Cisco, enable, and this was class. So to configure the banner, we have to go to the privilege mode, config, configure terminal, and then type banner MOTD message of the day banner the banner is important that whatever character you start with you have to finish it with the char same character so for example I start with a dollar I have to finish it with a dollar if I start with a pound sign I have to finish it with a pound sign or if I whatever I start with I have to finish it make sure that you don't start with the some character that is going to appear on your banner otherwise the banner will be shortened okay we'll see that in action we're going to start with the dollar sign and say authentication authorize users only and then i'll finish with the same character that i started which was a dollar sign dollar dollar press enter now to check this banner so i'll go exit exit again now when i log in i should see the banner right away and i can see it, it says authorized users only now I've got a banner, small banner. Okay, uh, let me just, what people do yeah, with the banners. You can get very creative. So I'll go to configure terminal, terminal, and I can say banner, MOTD, and I'll start with a dollar sign, press enter. Now I can be very creative with my banner. So for example, I can put like this, and 
on ASCII images. No, 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 none of that. Um, something like this. Okay. Uh, shift eight. Is my banner until I press the dollar sign. Everything will be the banner, part of the banner. So now I'm done. I can press the dollar sign and hit enter. So I'm going to try my banner. So exit, exit again. When I press enter now, you can see my banner. Very nice. Okay, Cisco here. Password enable class. Okay. Now configure terminal or config T. The banner MOTD. Let's let's go and try again MOTD. Now what I'm saying is your banner cannot start with some character that's going to appear on your on your uh, banner. So for example, if I start say that I start with O. Yeah, O. Let's pick O. Pick S. I don't know. Let's pick S. Small S. Small S. So then my banner is authorized users only and then I press small s again now what do you think of my banner is this my banner no that's not the banner the banner says okay well you started with the s so I'm gonna look until I see a s again that's gonna be part of the banner so here's the s so my banner has actually authorized you I don't want to do that okay so I'll press enter and check it so exit exit again see authorize you for that reason, you have to make sure that not none of the characters, the character you started with, is not going to appear on your banner message. Saving the configuration file, so whatever we are running at the moment is stored in RAM. So if you lose electricity, or if the device is powered off, and then powered back on, any configuration that we have is not there. So we have to save it. So that means that it will survive, the information will be retained if we run the power cycle. So if I go to uh, my switch, uh, Cisco, enable, class, okay, and I'll do show, let me, let me change the banner so we can see it, config t, banner, oh, just repeat the message, banner, MOTD, and then hit the dollar sign, and then just go and copy that banner that I had already, that was a nice banner. Copy and then go all the way there and paste it. Next enter and question dollar sign done. Exit, exit. I like this banner. Okay, Cisco enable plus. If I do show run or show running config, I hit tab there. I can see all my configuration that I'm doing. I got my banner there, I got my passwords there everything uh, I got the secret that I created I got the host name I got the password uh, service password encryption and so on this but this is a running configuration everything in running configuration if I do show startup config nothing so it means that if this switch is power cycle if it's switched off and then back on air no other configuration will will be there nothing will be written so for that reason we have to save it so copy running config to start up config destination file name start a config yeah enter done okay so when i do show running config i'll show startup config now i have configuration before you said nothing now i have all my configuration saved okay now i'm gonna put them in the notepad what we did so uh, from here, we said um, exit here. We said banner, MOTD, and we started with uh, dollar sign, and we said authorized users only, and then finish with dollar sign. Um, enable secret, enable, sorry, no, enable, um, no, we enable the service, so service, password, encryption, and then we saved it. Copy running config to start up config okay a few things i need to tell is 
for my students, I tell them um, to go to the console and add two more commands. First one is exec timeout zero zero. What this command does is it doesn't log you out. If you haven't done anything on the router or the switch, it will not log you out. By default, the router they will log you out in ten minutes. If you don't do, if you're idle for ten minutes, the router will log you out. If you have zero zero, it means the router will not log you out. Now, don't do this on the real life. Never. Really recommended you should change it for five minutes. If you are idle for five minutes, boom, it's gonna log you out. But for our training, zero zero is fine. And then the last one, login, sync. Or synchronization login. You remember that whenever we did something, for example, um, then the router was always giving these messages for us. So config T, for example, uh, interface FA00, uh, or just, uh, there's no interface here, is there? Exit. You see, now the message that the router is giving me some message, but I don't know where I am. So I have to press enter, right? Now for that, not to press enter, you do this command. Login, sync. Okay, here, here was easy, but, but early on, I don't know if we have it here. Early on, I had a lot of messages, different kind of messages. Um, I don't know if I can do it in this router. So let's see. Enable config T uh, interface FA01 no shutdown and uh, I'll do a co copy run. You see? Do you see it? I type copy, my COP is there, Y is there, run is there, and I don't know where I am. So I have to press enter first. And it says incomplete command. It could be a mistake, some more mistake. Now for that reason, for that reason, we type config T interface line, no sorry, line console zero, login, send or synchronous login right so now if I go for example say interface um, FA01 uh, uh, shutdown no okay I'll wait till some messages come and then I'll say there we go no shutdown no shutdown and copy running config key okay. you see now it's not mixing up it's copying my configuration whatever i'm typing is actually copying it there as well it's synchronizing my messages okay erasing configuration file now if undesired changes are saved to the startup configuration it might be necessary to clear all configuration files this requires erasing the startup configuration file and erasing the and restarting the device the startup configuration file is removed by using the race startup config command on the switch, you must also issue the delete vlan.dat command in addition to the race startup config command in order to return the device to its default out of the box configuration, comparable to a factory reset. For example, okay, now I'm going to go to the switch, so say um, config D, and I'm going to create some VLAN. So VLAN 10, uh, VLAN 20, or VLAN 2, doesn't matter, VLAN 20, okay, and to see these VLANs, show VLAN brief. Okay, I can see that. I have VLAN 2, 10, 20, and so on. Now, if I do erase, startup, startup complete. So, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm erasing anything that's in startup. But the problem is that these VLANs, they're not going to be erased because they are stored in different places. They are stored in flash, they are not stored in NVRAM. So, if I reload this router or the switch, when the switch reloads, the VLANs are still there. But not on the configuration because we erased all the configuration that we did, but not the VLANs. So what you need to do, so you see there's nothing, enable, there's no passwords, show run, empty. You know, still no pass service password encryption, host name same, the default, there's no secret, there's nothing here. But if I say show VLAN brief, my VLANs are still there. So the, the router is only one step. For the router, you only say erase, startup, config. That's it. Done. And reload the router, and it's factory reset. But for the switch, it's two steps. You have to do this, erase, startup, config, and you have to do delete, flash, 
delete VLAN dot that no flash delete VLAN dot that delete file name VLAN dot that yep confirm you want to delete file name called VLAN dot that in flash are you sure yeah and then reload now we deleted the startup config and we deleted the VLAN dot that file so once this root uh, switch reloads it's like factory reset okay once it restarts we can check show vlan brief and the two ten two sorry two ten twenty is not there the one is the default so the one is always going to be there and there's four others they're always going to be there they are the default capturing text now text used to be hard to capture in hyper uh, terminal um, but you have to actually do this. The steps will go to the file menu, click log, choose the location of Terraform, will, will begin capturing text, and so on. Now it's a bit easier these days. If you use a secure CRT or Terraform, all you have to do is highlight, highlight the text, and that's already copied in your on your uh, on the memory. For example, let's let's do some config t interface fa00, give an IP address, IP address. 10.1.1.1 255 255.0 not shut down okay and right so if I want to copy this so I only highlight it and it's already copied on the on the clipboard so if I go to notepad and I want to paste it I write to right click control uh, sorry right click and say paste control V so it's already copied all that text we typed right if you want to paste some of the text that we write, so for example, not that, it's going to give us a lot of errors. Say that we want to paste uh, this, right? All you have to do, you highlight it on the notepad, right click, copy, go to the router, config T here, and just all you have to do is right click, Alt E S to clear the screen, right click. That's it, it's pasted there. Okay, now we, uh, I'm not going to do the demonstration. We already seen the demonstration of all these uh, as I was explaining them. So you can see them uh, if you return, like pause and pause and then rewind the video and so on. Okay, this has been Astrid Krasnitsky helping you or demonstrating you how to configure initial switch settings. Remember that the settings, this initial configuration is exactly the same whether you're setting the switch or the router. I'll see you on section 2.3 addressing schemes. Thank you for watching my video and bye bye.